Hi everyone. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, carcinoma larynx, the first part of the presentation. In this uh, presentation, we will be talking about the important questions, the relevant anatomy for this, and the etiology. Coming to the uh, important questions or the relevant important questions uh, for this carcinoma larynx. Carcinoma larynx is a little bit of a challenging topic. Uh, there are so many so many parts of it uh, and there are so many variations of the treatment and the staging uh, and there are so many parts even in the larynx that we are going to talk about the, the supraglottic carcinoma the glottic carcinoma and the subglottic carcinoma so it can be a little bit overwhelming so let us try to keep it as simple as possible at the same time relevant for the exam the first question that is uh, that uh, that we are going that is there is uh, discuss the clinical assessment clinical assessment means uh, you take the history and do the examination what are the findings or what is the history that the patient is going to present to you with and uh, uh, what are what, what what are the findings what are going what are you going to find uh, on the indirect laryngoscopic examination examination of the neck etc investigations how do you investigate this case of carcinoma larynx uh, so that your diagnosis is confirmed and you can form a proper uh, a base uh, you know staging for the for the purpose of staging so that you can uh, give a proper treatment to the patient then to discuss the clinical assessment investigations and treatment so the treatment is also uh, noted here he is giving three marks for clinical assessment two marks for investigations and five marks for treatment so he is giving more marks for the treatment okay of a 65 year old man it's a 65 year old male who is a smoker with hoarseness of voice with hoarseness of voice for two months and suspicious growth vocal cord so he has already put the diagnosis here suspicious growth vocal cord he is not talking about the supraglottic carcinoma or subglottic carcinoma he is talking about the vocal cord that is the glottic carcinoma okay this is the first question now second question is also similar enumerate the causes of strider in a child this is an another topic we will discuss it later discuss the evaluation evaluation means again the same thing history and uh, investigations management means investigations and treatment history and clinical examination history and clinical examination uh, management means investigations and treatment of of a strider now he is having a different presentation strider he is presenting you with strider noisy breathing of 3 days duration of a 50 year old male again a 50 year old male who is having hoarseness in the last 3 months so he is having hoarseness in the last 3 months ok this is a 10 marks question so these are both essays ok here also we are talking about uh, hoarseness of voice once you talk of hoarseness of voice as we will discuss later this is, means that the patient is having carcinoma or a growth because we do not use the word carcinoma growth vocal cord so hoarseness means growth vocal cord we will discuss it in detail okay then coming to the short four mark questions clinical features and treatment of carcinoma glottis again he is focusing on glottis the first question did you observe this is like glottic carcinoma he is clearly mentioned that we, we, we want to know the uh, uh, clinical assessment investigations and treatment of a growth vocal cord second one is also is giving an indication saying that i want to know about the carcinoma glottis third one again carcinoma glottis why because carcinoma glottis is more common but uh, most of the examiners are also focused mostly on carcinoma glottis so carcinoma glottis when you when we talk about carcinoma larynx so it mostly is going in the direction of carcinoma glottis only okay but we also need to realize that there is carcinoma subglottis and supraglottis okay staging and clinical features of carcinoma larynx now he is coming to carcinoma larynx so he is coming to uh, there is like supraglottis glottis and subglottis carcinoma larynx surgical management of carcinoma larynx so uh, if you have a more focus on vocal growth uh, carcinoma glottis then uh, supraglottis and subglottis uh, by inference we can go okay? okay why am i discussing about the questions at the beginning of the chapter uh, this is a mistake or maybe it's a kind of a mistake that I made when I was studying. I used to just leap directly into the textbook without having any orientation. 
you know without having any orientation regarding what the equations will come so that i feel is not the right way you do go into you do study the textbook but in the back of your mind you have to know what is the examiner expecting from you because unless you pass the exam you have to go to the next class right you have to go to the final year part 2 you have to go to a, a medicine surgery and finally you have to come out of mbbs the goal is always to pass the exam having a good subject definitely will help you but 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 it's very important to have a orientation what are you studying for what is the examiner expecting from you if you have this knowledge then life becomes easy this is my experience okay now coming to the anatomy of the larynx so a larynx is divided into three parts one is the supraglottis glottis and subglottis okay the part of the larynx this part of the larynx which is above the level of the vocal cord is the supraglottis the part that is encompassing this part including the vocal cords is the glottis and below it is the subglottis till the lower border of the cricoid cartilage okay supraglottis supraglottis the definition is everything above the level of the true vocal cords is supraglottis everything about the level of the true vocal cords so this is the true vocal cords so whatever part of the larynx is present above the level of the vocal cords is supraglottis so what are the components or the parts of the supraglottis so this we can see clearly this is the epiglottis okay epiglottis this is the ara epiglottic fold this is the ara epiglottic fold this is the arytenoids these are the arytenoids okay all these are the, this is the arytenoids okay and this is a false cord we are not talking about the true cords so one is the epiglottis epiglottis does have a lingual surface this is the laryngeal surface this on this side if you look at it from the mouth from the oral cavity you will see the lingual surface so both of them the lingual and the laryngeal surfaces they are arytenoids they are epiglottic folds false cords and also you have the ventricle the space in between the false cords and the true cords the one that goes inside that also is part of the that also is part of the supraglottis so let me just repeat one is the epiglottis second one is the ara epiglottic fold third one is the arytenoids fourth one is false cords fifth one is the space in between the true cords and the false cords that is the ventricle okay coming to glottis what is glottis for a long time i used to have it some impression in the mind saying that glottis is only a plane okay it is only that part, the level of the vocal cord only the vocal cords come in it but the definition says that glottis lies at the level of the true vocal cords and extends 1 cm below it so it is not a plane it's a three dimensional area it is not a two dimensional area it is a three dimensional area so this is the vocal cords and 1 cm below it the entire thing comes under the glottis okay the vocal cords is starting here the cricornus elasticus as we say uh, that membrane which is starting from the upper border of the cricoid cartilage the and it is going upwards the upper free border forms the vocal cords okay so the entire thing so this is the glottis the glottis is not a two dimensional structure it is a three dimensional space okay so the vocal cords and 1 cm below it the whole thing comes under the glottis okay components of the glottis so glottis also has components and parts one is the anterior commissure what is anterior commissure this is where the two vocal cords meet anteriorly on the medial surface of the thyroid cartilage so this is the anterior commissure area this is the anterior commissure area where the vocal cords are meeting each other on the medial surface of the thyroid cartilage so they are attached to the thyroid cartilage this part is called the anterior commissure this is the true vocal cord now the second part is the true vocal cord it is formed in its anterior two third by the upper free border of the cricovocal membrane that is what i was talking about the cricovocal membrane is a membrane is a tough membrane so it arises from the upper border of the cricoid cartilage goes upwards and it is not attached to the upper border is free that free border forms a true vocal cords okay that is the anterior two thirds only anterior two third posterior one third of the vocal cord uh, is formed by the vocal process of the arytenoid vocal process of the arytenoid so true vocal cord is formed in its anterior two third by the upper free border of the cricovocal membrane and the posterior one third by the cric vocal process of the arytenoid so this is the vocal process of the arytenoid posterior one third and uh, what is the third uh, component third part is a posterior commissure posterior commissure the vocal process this is the vo vocal process 
uh, along with the interarytenoid area, the vocal process along with the interarytenoid area forms the anterior commissure. So we have the anterior commissure where the two vocal cords meet each other at the medial border of the thyroid cartilage, the membranous uh, vocal, the membranous vocal cords which form the anterior two third, the posterior one third is a cartilaginous part which is formed by the vocal process of the arytenoid. This vocal process along with the aryte, along with the interarytenoid area is called the uh, posterior commission. Okay, so uh, glottis uh, is a glottis is a three dimensional area. It is not a plane. It is a space okay it is one centimeter below the level of the vocal cords it has three parts one is the anterior commissure the posterior commissure and the vocal cords so these three parts form the uh, glottis so glottis is what the most of the focus is going to be on subglottis from one centimeter below the level of the two vocal cords to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage is a subglottis so lower border of the cricoid cartilage one centimeter below the level of the vocal cord this is the glottis uh, from there the subglottis is starting and this part which is present from the one centimeter below the level of the vocal cords to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage that forms the subglottis subglottic carcinoma is very rare okay coming to the lymphatic drainage this is important why is it important because if you have a neck node uh, the presenting feature is that there is a neck node you can you can get some information saying that it is probably not a carcinoma glottis or it is a carcinoma glottis which has extended into the supraglottis so once the patient has a lymph node it uh, the stage uh, the stage goes into th fourth stage uh, third stage fourth stage it becomes and the prognosis falls down very badly the moment you touch the neck of the patient and find a hard immobile node you can you already know that the prognosis of this patient is not good okay so lymphatic drainage coming to lymphatic drainage glottis glottis acts as a watershed for lymphatic watershed means it is a barrier means what is above this what is above the level of the vocal cord is the supraglottis that the lymphatic drainage is different subglottis the lymphatic drainage is different so this uh, glottis acts as a watershed that means the supraglottis will not cross the glottic and go into subglottis that is the lymphatic drainage of the supraglottis which is separate so, so the lymphatic drainage of subglottis is separate they do not mix because glottis acts as a watershed or a barrier supraglottis drains into upper and middle deep cervical lymph nodes so these are the upper upper uh, deep cervical upper deep cervical lymph nodes and this is the middle deep cervical lymph nodes it's also called the jugular group this comes at level 2 level 3 and level 4 okay we call we have different levels we will talk about it later in the staging now this is where the vocal cords are there so supraglottis will drain into the upper deep cervical and middle deep cervical lymph nodes this is the lymphatic drainage of the supraglottis now this is the glottis again one centimeter below subglottis okay it's still here is the subglottis subglottis drains into the lower deep cervical lymph nodes either it can go directly into the lower deep cervical lymph nodes or it can go to the pre laryngeal or pre tracheal pre laryngeal or pre tracheal pre laryngeal or pre tracheal lymph nodes this will drain into it and finally it will drain into the inferior or the lower deep cervical lymph nodes subglottis drains into the lower deep cervical lymph nodes and mediastinal lymph nodes it can go into the mediastinal lymph nodes also either it can go directly either it can go directly into the lower deep cervical or mediastinal or it can go through the pre laryngeal and pre tracheal lymph nodes from there into the mediastinal and uh, lower deep cervical lymph nodes glottis luckily we do not there are no lymphatics so it is a non lymphatic area there is no lymphatic drainage from the vocal cords because of which carcinoma glottis will not spread easily it has the least lymphatic metastasis hence the best prognosis so carcinoma glottis because it is uh, does not have any lymphatics so the chance of the patient with carcinoma glottis or the growth of the vocal cord which is a carcinoma does not spread into the uh, into the lymphatics uh, into the lymph nodes so we have a better prognosis compared to supraglottic carcinoma and subglottic carcinoma so supraglottic carcinoma drains into the upper deep cervical and middle deep cervical and uh, carcinoma subglottis, the subglottis drains into the lower deep cervical and the mediastinal lymph nodes. Either it can go directly to them or it can go, the lymphatics can go to the pre tracheal or pre laryngeal. From there, it can go to the lower deep cervical and the mediastinal lymph nodes. 
Okay. Now coming to the uh, carcinoma larynx proper. Now what is epidemiology? Where what is this is nothing but incidence and prevalence. Okay, incidence and prevalence. So carcinoma glottis, uh, carcinoma larynx forms 2.5 percent of all body cancers. It looks small, right? 2.5 percent of all body cancers, but for an ENT surgeon, uh, he is going to see more cases of carcinoma larynx than any other carcinoma of the head and neck. I, if I if I see a carcinoma, it's mostly carcinoma larynx. Uh, chances of me finding a nasopharyngeal carcinoma or me finding a squamous cell carcinoma of the skin or maxillary carcinoma or uh, you know uh, palate carcinoma, which is arising from the uh, the salivary small minor salivary glands. These are all very rare. Most of the times, it's like if I see five cases, I'll see one case. Or if I see ten cases, I'll see one case. Like of uh, the other carcinoma. So the most common carcinoma that an ENT guy will encounter is uh, carcinoma larynx. Okay, it has a great preponderance among males, probably because males are mainly smokers. Uh, smoking history you can find mostly in males. So carcinoma glottis is ten times more common in males, mostly in the age group of ten to forty to seventy years. So less than forty years, finding a carcinoma is very rare. In this age group of 40 to 70 years, most of the carcinomas will present themselves. So they form 2.5 percent of all body cancers, 10 times more common in males, and the age group of 40 to 70 years. What is the etiology? What causes carcinoma larynx? Uh, the first is always tobacco. Tobacco, tobacco, tobacco. So tobacco is the one that causes most of the cancers. Uh, so tobacco is the first etiological factor. Second is alcohol. What is described is if a uh, patient uh, uses only tobacco is a uh, smoker his chance of getting a carcinoma is like three to five fold increased compared to the rest of the general population okay but uh, and if the person is having alcohol it is two to three times increased compared to the general population but if a person is having tobacco and alcohol both then the chance will become 15 times more 15 times more than the general population okay Previous irradiation to the neck, either because you want to, you have given radiation for some other purpose, uh, maybe for laryngeal papillomatosis is one of the things that we, that the children may have been exposed to juvenile, juvenile laryngeal papillomatosis. So that is one fair, one of the etiological factors or occupational exposure to asbestos and mustard gas. Asbestos and mustard gas are also carcinogenic. So these things are less, most of the, most commonly, most common etiological factor is tobacco, whatever form of tobacco is taken, either it's BD, cigarette or zarda or tobacco chewing. Uh, so these things, this is the most common cause. Next comes is alcohol, as we have seen, alcohol. Then the previous radiation, this is a very rare uh, history that we may elicit from a patient or occupational exposure to asbestos and mustard gas. So this is the etiology. Histopathology. Most of the carcinomas in the head and neck region of an ENT uh, field is almost always squamous cell carcinoma. So 90 to 95 percent of the cases of carcinoma larynx are squamous cell carcinomas. Rarely, very rarely you will find other types like spindle cell carcinoma, but that is not important. This is uh, like 90 to 95 percent of the cases is squamous cell carcinoma. The caudal lesion, the lesions of the carcinoma glottis, that is the lesions that are uh, coming in the carcinoma glottis, they are most uh, most of the times well differentiated. That is, the uh, they have most of the features of a squamous cell carcinoma, uh, uh, squamous cell carcinoma. They are well differentiated. That, that is, uh, they, they are not like poorly differentiated. The, the histopathological report is going to come like it is a well differentiated squamous cell cancer. Well differentiated always have a better prognosis. So they grow slower, they have lesser metastasis than compared to anaplastic or ill differentiated carcinomas which uh, spread faster, which spread faster either locally, locally they will spread faster or even metastasis also they will get faster. So supraglottic carcinomas have a bad prognosis compared to carcinoma glottis. Okay, so histopathology most of the cases are squamous cell carcinoma, carcinoma glottis or caudal lesions are well differentiated, supraglottic carcinomas are anaplastic. So this is the end of the first uh, part of carcinoma glottis, uh, sorry, uh, first uh, uh, part of carcinoma larynx. Thank you so much for the patient listening.